Hi, you're here starting with Cody and Pete. And in today's video, we are going to be making a bench pillow, which is a 16 by 38 inch bench pillow using the bench pillow pillow form. But the cool thing about this bench pillow is that we're using a border print. So you may have some extra border prints um, laying around from quilts you have left over, or you find a fabric line that you absolutely fall in love with, you buy all the fabric for it, and you find you don't use the border print in your project you work with, and so you're left with this border print. So we are using the 16 by 38 inch pillow form, and we are making a border pillow, bench pillow. And we will be also be putting in a zipper. Super easy. So in this fairly short video, we're gonna show you from start to finish how to create super easy, super fun bench pillows using a border print. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here we are with the chosen border print that I've chosen. Um, I just fell in love with this border print. I can't remember why we got it, if it was for a quilt or whatnot, but we've got panels and we've got some coordinates to go with it. But I think it would make a beautiful uh, bench pillow or just a nice long pillow that would, like we saw in the beginning, what we're going to make. So here is what I had chosen for my borders at the top and the bottom of this piece. And then, of course, the geese, the flying geese for the back. So let's get started. Let's get cutting. Oh, and of course, my zipper. And here I'm using a 22 inch zipper. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the size of our border print because that's going to determine the size that we need to cut our um, border or top and bottom border that we're going to attach to this border print for the front of our pillow. So let's see what we've got. So one thing when we're cutting these border prints, some of them can be more easier than others. So here we have a little separator piece, which is perfect. And it looks like it's about a half an inch. So it's perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure and we're gonna cut, cause we want this piece to be as big as possible. And we want these to be as small as possible typically. But some border prints are much smaller, but this is a nice, a nice good size. So what we're gonna do is we wanna make sure that, um, cause we use half, uh, quarter inch seam allowances for this particular one. Um, we wanna cut a quarter of an inch outside of our border print to save as much border seen as possible. And that should work out perfect since we have a half inch to work with. So we could make technically four pillows out of this. Or what I've done previously is I've put this on the front and on the back. So I added a border two border pieces, one on the top, one on the bottom of two different border prints. So I use one piece for the front and one piece for the back. But here I may do it a little bit differently. So let's measure and see what we've got. So it looks like this border prints 10 inches, which is perfect. So if I move my ruler up a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch here, I should be able to go right down the center of this brown um, divider piece. And that should give me a cut two and a, I'm sorry, a 10 and a half inch piece. And with our quarter inch seam allowance, that will, um, give me just 10 inches of border print so we can do that and our whole front piece needs to be 16 inches so the pillow form that we're using is 16 by 38 and i like to make my pillow cases i like to cut them to exact size so i want to cut this particular pillow uh, top or the front and the back piece I want it to be cut at 16 by 38. So when I sew it, it's gonna be slightly smaller. So it's gonna fit that pillow form really nice and tight. So we're not gonna have too much excess fabric. So what we'll need to do here, so we know we'll have a 10 and a half inch piece here, which means we should be able to cut this into two strips that are three and a half inches. And that should give us a perfect size. And every border print's gonna be different. So what we're going to do is so we're going to cut a border print off of this yardage. And so the yardage that I have here, um, I think, what did I cut? Almost a yard and a quarter, about a yard and a quarter. 
because that gave me 42 inches, it kind of need, needs to be 38. Um, yeah, so that's about right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to line up this blue, this the, the print here. I'm going to line that edge up with my quarter inch marking on my ruler. So then I'm going to cut this piece off. So you can see I have about a quarter of an inch of that brown piece. And so I'll come here and cut the rest of it off. And I'm just lining up my quarter inch marking on my ruler all the way down. If anything, you would actually want less of this uh, brown divider piece because the less you have, the less likely there is for you to see it once you piece your border on. So if you have too much in a spot and you follow a nice quarter inch seam allowance or half inch seam allowance, whatever you decide to do, um, if you follow it too precisely and your cut isn't quite precise, then um, you could see it within your piecing. When you, that's what you really don't want. So we've got that cut off. So here I can rotate this. And of course, make sure you don't cut into your fabric. Can't tell, me, tell you how many times I've done that. All right. So here we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to line up with that quarter inch marking. And you're basically cutting right down the center of that brown divider piece in our border print. And this is why a nice long ruler is nice. So this is definitely the most used ruler is a six and a half by 24 and a half. It's just a perfect size. All right, so here is the border print that I've got cut out. Perfect. So now I'm gonna go and cut two strips, the width of the fabric that are three and a half inches wide. So here, let's get a nice square edge. So I'll line my fold up with the line here and cut that off. And then so I'm going to cut two three and a half inch strips. And the reason I chose three and a half inches is because with what I calculated when I sew that three and a half inch strip to my ten and a half inch border strip, it should leave me with um, the perfect width for my pillow after my seam allowance. So here I've got those two. I've got this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin, actually I should it really doesn't matter. Typically as a quilter, we would want to cut this to size to be the perfect size at 38 inches, which we can do. And then of course we'd want to cut these two pieces that same exact size. Um, but with this, with the dual feed on the Bernina um, or using a walking foot, for this it doesn't matter. This is not a quilt, so we don't have to make it that precise. This is meant to be a super fun, quick, easy project. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sew it down. But, you know, I can't resist but to pin. If I can find my pins. Aha, binding clips. So we'll just clip it along. And it just kind of helps keep the edges together and we'll have it laid nice and flat so it shouldn't be stretched out.
And what we'll do once we have it all sewn, then we can trim it up to size, which is going to be that 38 inches. I do love binding clips. I like using pins a lot as well, but it really depends on what I'm working with and what I'm making. Garments, I much prefer to pin, but for something like this, binding clips work perfectly. Perfect. So now we can go to the sewing machine, sew the sides down, um, and then we'll go to the ironing board and press them out. All right, here we are at the sewing machine, and I do have my quarter inch foot on just because with this particular project and this particular pattern, I am doing a quarter inch seam. Otherwise, you could do a half inch seam, three eighths inch seam, whatever. Um, but a quarter inch seam is going to be perfect. So I've got my 97D quarter inch foot on, I've got my straight stitch plate on, the machine knows all, knows all this. So we're just going to start stitching. All right, so now we've got our borders sewn. So we're gonna take them to the um, ironing board and give them a nice little press. All right, so here we're at the ironing board. So I've got my pieces sewn. So now we're gonna press them back and we're gonna make sure we have that seam underneath our border, our border we just added to our border print. Just gonna press that nice and flat and make sure this seam is pressed nice and flat. You don't want any little fold overs. You want that seam to be pressed nice. And a little bit of steam is always nice. It really allows you to get that seam pressed flat. Perfect. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the sewing machine and we're going to do some top stitching. You know, I love doing top stitching. So we're going to top stitch this down. It'll make it look nicer, add some extra stitching to it. And it's also going to hold that fold back in place. All right, to the sewing machine. All right, now, so we're back at the sewing machine. So we want to switch our quarter inch foot for our edge stitch foot, which on the Bernina is number 10 and number 10 D's, awesome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ride this, ed, this guide against the fold edge here. And we're gonna stitch as far as we can over to the right. And with it being, a, with the 770 being a nine millimeter stitch with machine, I can really get pretty far over. So now we're just gonna stitch down. And we wanna stitch it down in a thread that will complement our fabric or just kinda of blend in. And what I have now is just kinda of like a cream thread. So we take a look here, we can see that nice, pretty top stitching. And that's just gonna add another little element to our pillow. So now we're gonna go and do the other side. All right, so now we're done with stitching both sides. So I still like to do that. I like to go to the ironing board, just give this a quick little press. But at this point, we're gonna set this aside and then we're gonna go and construct and cut the back and put in a zipper. Oh, my favorite part of do making pillows is putting in a zipper because zippers and pillows are just the easiest. All right, let's go look at our backing piece that we need to cut. All right, so here we are, this is our backing piece. And so this piece is just gonna be one continuous piece, but we're gonna split it down the center and put in the zipper. Um, so this needs to be the width of our top that we just made, which is about 16 inches. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut a 16 inch piece from here. So first things first, 
let's square off this side so we work with a nice square side so we just I line up my fold of my fabric with um, a horizontal line on the ruler and that will give me a nice straight cut so here we're going to depend on there's multiple ways to do this but for what we're working on it's not a quilt block it's nothing in the quilt so it doesn't have to be perfect is we are going to use the measurements on our ruler I'm sorry the measurements on our cutting mat to give us a nice cut so what I'm doing is I'm lining up my cut side of my fabric with the zero basically on my uh, cutting mat and then I'm lining the fold up with one of the lines here and that will just ensure that I have a pretty good cut Okay, and then, so it needs to be 16 inches so we can look at our rule, our, our cutting mat, and we go up to the 16 inches here. Line that up there, and of course, make sure it lines up with the 16 inch up at the top of the cutting mat. Looks good to me. And cut that off. So that's extra for some something else. So what we're going to do here is we're going to split this down, this cut, and then we'll sew in our zipper. Hope everybody's excited. Let's see. So we have multiple ways we can do this too. So we have a nice crease down the center. So we're just gonna cut that down the center. And your zipper doesn't have to be directly down the center. You can put whatever you feel like putting it. All right, so now we're gonna lay our zipper down and we're gonna sew it together. So this is a longer zipper than what's needed, um, but the next size that we had down was like a 14 inch zipper. So the 22 inch zipper is the biggest that we had that wasn't a 48 inch zipper. So what we're going to do is we are going to take the zipper. So you have the zipper teeth facing up. We're going to face them down. So we're going to face these zipper teeth down against the right side of our fabric. And we can take our binding clips. And we're just going to kind of take the center of the zipper and place it down to the center of our fabric. And so we will just kind of just clip the zipper. So the edge of the zipper tape is along the edge of the raw fabric. And we're going to use our zipper foot. So when putting on a zipper, it takes up about three eighths of an inch of fabric which is why we're not really worried about the length of our back piece just yet. We can square it up to match it to the front side when we cut that. So we'll go and sew this, and then we'll come back and sew the other side. All right, to the machine. All right, so we're back at the sewing machine. I've got my zipper kind of binding clipped to my fabric. So what we're gonna do, what I like to do, so we're working with the zipper foot here, and on Bernini this is number four, and this is actually a 4D. Um, so we're gonna actually line the left side of my zipper right along the teeth on my zipper tape. Um, but of course we'll be working from the back side. So we wanna get as close as possible to those teeth. So let's move our needle over. And I like to move my needle as far over as possible to get the fabric as close to the zipper teeth as possible. So we can lower our foot. So the foot naturally wants to ride along that raised zipper teeth. So if you feel it, you can feel that uh, the teeth of the zipper right down the center. So as we're sewing, we want to make sure that the zipper tape edge, this is one way to do it at least, we want to make sure that the zipper tape edge lines up with the raw edge of our fabric and that ensures that the, the zipper is being sewn on straight. All right, let's take a look at our zipper and see if we did it right. So there it is. So here we have our fabric, one side sewn to our zipper. So now what I always like to do is I like to top stitch my uh, fabric down to my zipper. So you use the same foot. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna lower our foot just like you see here. However, I need to move my needle over to the right. 
So let's see. But I don't want to move it too far over to the right. So I want it just as far as I can get it so it's beyond the center portion of my zipper foot so it doesn't strike that zipper foot. So there we go. So we moved it three spaces over to the right. So what we're doing now is we're making sure that the right side of my zipper is aligning with the left side of that zipper, the zipper teeth. And that'll just help me keep it straight. So we can see we have a nice close top stitch. Now many of you know me, I like a double top stitch. So I'll go back and stitch it again. But I'm going to move my needle position over. So now we're going to move it over three spaces to the left. So what this is going to do is going to give me a double top stitch. So it looks really nice, but also it holds that zipper tape down more. You can see here I still have a little bit of a flap. But I wanted to stitch it nice and close to the edge. But here it's going to hold down that flap perfectly. Now mind you, you can do a zipper on the serger as well. That's a whole nother video. So here you can see I've got a double top stitch zipper. And so it lays nice and flat. That's perfect. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. This looks great. This is exactly the look we're going for. So now we're basically going to do the same thing with the other piece. So I can go ahead and grab that other piece. And so what we'll do, so here is my other piece of fabric. And so this is the piece in which it was cut from this piece, this edge, as a matter of fact. So what we're going to do, zoom out for you. So what we'll do is we can line up the raw edge of our fabric against the zipper tape here and kind of line up and match with the top. And do make sure your pattern's going the correct way. So we can line it up here, give it a little binding clip, because why not? And we can come and line it up with the end. Give it a binding clip. And we kind of meet somewhere in the middle. And give it a binding clip. All right. So here we're going to stitch from the left side again. So we want to make sure we move our needle position all the way over to the left. So we can get nice and close to the zipper teeth. And we can start sewing it down just like we did previously. All right, so now we've got it sewn down, attached to our zipper. Looks perfect. So now, of course, we'll do some more top stitching. The same thing we did before. So here we're going to move our needle. So it's just three spaces to the left. And then we come back to the top, and we're going to move our needle over to the right to get that double stitching. Perfect. That's perfect. That's the look we're going for. So now all we have to do is trim this up to match the top that we're going to trim up, sew it together, and we are almost done. So I'll go, we'll go to the cutting table and go cut what we need to uh, line everything up with. All right, to the cutting table. All right, so we're back at the cutting table. So what I did is I folded my fabric in half again, and it's not exactly in half, 
um, cause it's easier since the zipper will lay nice and flat is if I fold it almost in half but so the zipper does lay flat cause you can see up here we're not exactly just folded in half which is fine because we have excess and if it, the zipper isn't perfectly in the center if it's off a half an inch nobody's gonna know so what I did is I laid the bottom of my zipper along the bottom of my um, cutting board so what we're gonna do is we need this uh, to be 38 inches so half of 38 inches is 19 inches so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut off this at the 19 inch mark just to make sure everything stays nice and straight it was going to cut this off at 19 inches which should give me 38 inches so I can set this aside and now I can get the piece we worked on earlier so we'll do the same exact thing here so you want to make sure that our pieces are folded in half and lined up front and back nicely and then we do the same thing we're going to line it up with the edge here and then we're going to cut off at the 19 inches and let's make sure it's lined up with 19 here and 19 up here we'll cut that off so now we are almost done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our front and our back, lay them right sides together, and make sure, of course, that you're, in this case, my geese or my pattern is going the same direction. So we have the geese going up and the geese going up here. We don't want it upside down. So this should <laughs> line up nicely, which it does. Perfect. So from corner to corner. So we're going to lay this nicely on top and we will pin it. So we can pin it, use our binding clips all the way around and we're going to sew all the way around, almost. So what we're going to do, I'm going to start around here because it's the top of my zipper pull. So I'm going to start around here and go all the way around and I'm going to stop right about here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my zipper pull down to right about here and then I'm going to then I'm going to sew the rest of the way and sew right over this zipper tape it's plastic your needles can go over it super easy you shouldn't have any problems the only problem you have to pay attention to is at the very end that little metal piece you don't want to sew over that metal piece this is one of the reasons for most of the projects that we work with we always work with a zipper that's slightly bigger than what we need to so we can have the ends hang over so you don't have to worry about ever encountering the metal pieces at the top of the zipper or the metal pieces at the bottom of the zipper. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to place a few pins or binding clips around and then we are going to sew. And you can sew a quarter of an inch around. You can do a little bit bigger if you want. Um, if your pillowcase is a little bit smaller than the pillow form, that's fine. It'll just make for a fluffier pillow, but you don't want it too much smaller because then it can look like a tight overstuffed pillow so we'll do a quarter of an inch around and when we get to here i'll show you how we'll stop all right so here we are so you can see i'm starting a few inches away from the zipper tape and i'm just going to sew all the way around So as you see, we're reaching the bottom of our zipper and we're going to sew right over this with the greatest of ease. Don't even know we sewed over it. All right, so we're getting close to our zipper. So what we're gonna do is we're going to zip down or pull down the zipper down a few inches into our pillow. Get in there. 
So what we also want to make sure is we want to make sure all of our fabric stays lined up. But when we get close to the zipper, we want to keep this nice and tight. So you could put binding clips right here. And when we sew over it, we just want to make sure it stays together. And we're going to stitch right over it. And you can do an extra little back stitch just to secure that. But do not try that with a metal zipper. All right, now we're pretty much done. So all we're gonna do is we're going to trim this up. We even cut this with these little scissors here. So we're just gonna cut that off. And that's pretty much it. So I do like to go around and serge it just so my inside's nice and clean. But for this case, we're just gonna leave it like this. So let's go and reveal it and let's open it up. All right, so we're back here. So now we're gonna open this guy up. So like I said, typically we would have gone around and surged the edges, but here we're not going to worry about it. So we can try and unzip the zipper some more. And we can, oh, so there's one more thing. So whenever you do corners like this, it, it's always best if you go and kind of trim that corner up a little bit, cut a little off, it'll give you a nice prettier point when you turn it. There we are. So let's go and turn this right side out. All right, so here it is, all finished. So let's put the pillow form in it. So here is our 16 by 38 pillow form, premium bench pillow. So on yours, you would take the plastic off, but we're always reusing our pillow forms at the shop, so we leave our plastic on. And voila! If it wasn't the plastic, it'll fluff up a little bit more. But there's our pillow. There it is. What a neat way to use up border prints that you've had or a border print that you love that you don't know what to do with it. And super simple. Gosh, it was just, didn't take no time. And if you get a yard and a quarter with most border prints you could make four of them or you could make at least two and you have a border on the front and one on the back but just a super wonderful project to use with borders and there's some projects that you may have bought yardage for a border print and you have excess left over maybe just like one strip of some border and this is a perfect project you could even do a smaller pillow and just put borders or uh, like another border around it to frame it off and it's done but one of the best parts is your zipper. That was so easy of a zipper to do. It didn't take no time and you have a beautiful zipper. You don't have to worry about the, low, the envelope method or anything like that. Uh, the zipper is so easy. And every machine comes with a zipper foot, no matter what you have. Um, and this is a great way to learn how to work with zippers because it's such an easy method. But that's it. This is your pillow. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Remember, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my quilt alongs. I'm going to be working on a shirt class if that's not already up by the time you're watching this video. Um, but as always, happy sewing. <laughs>